Hey, this is Blog Guy Gamer, and welcome to a Black Sheep Gear Review Halloween special. Because in this video, we're going to do something really scary Philips CDI games. <laughs> yes, I actually got a CDI quite a while ago, and I think now would finally be an appropriate time to do something with it. Did someone say CDI? Yes, hello fellow friend and RCG member Canadian Jutsu. I was just about to go over mine. Are you dressed up as a vampire from your Sims 4 video? Nah, I'm an Akatsuki this year. The only reason why I'm wearing this cloak in the first place is so Zero doesn't shoot me with his toy guns. Blah, by the way. Right. And I take it you're here because of your CDI knowledge? You bet your sideburns, Blondie, you have no idea how excited I am to finally have somebody else to talk to about the CDI. I mean, I've had mine since the 90s, and for some strange reason, no one's ever wanted to come over and play second player with me. Well, I mean, Zero has come over on a couple of occasions, but a lot of the times he shows me borderline, smutty, interactive games, so I don't know if I should really count those. It was really just me and the Phillips. Just me and Phil. And the glow of the television. The lonely Canadian winters. With only the television to warm my face. I didn't have any friends. But now I do! And that's what matters! Uh, yeah, I suppose so. So, what are you gonna play first? I mean, I guess you could start big and play the Wanda Gamelon. That would certainly get you a lot of views. Uh, no, actually there's- Nah, 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 you're gonna want to save that till later. How about Wacky World of Miniature Golf with commentary from Eugene Levy? I mean, you and Zero Game Girls played that, but no. Oh, oh, how about my totally legit copy of Thunder in Paradise? It's based off a Smash television show starring Hulk Hogan. That <laughs> had one season. Wait, what? But no, there's... Oh, I get it. You're gonna play Hotel Mario, because I got lots of spaghetti! CJ! While I appreciate your... enthusiasm, I was gonna start with the games I got with my system. Oh. Well, what do you got then? Yeah, okay, I have no idea what those are, so <laughs> you're on your own. But if you ever need any help with any CDI material, Know that I got your back. Oh, I will. Those Nintendo property ones certainly aren't cheap. Then I shall leave you with the wonders of the CDI. I'm sure you'll experience the best that the CDI has to offer. <laughs> Blah! What worries me more is that I couldn't tell if he was being sarcastic more than turning to a bat. Anyway... Before we go over these games that not even someone like CJ knows anything about, I do want to quickly go over the CDI system I do have, as it's not your typical CDI model. Because technically this isn't a Philips CDI per se, but a DVS VE200 CD interactive player. Yeah, DVS and other companies actually did make their own models of CDIs, even after Philips themselves stopped making their initial models since those, to the shock of no one, didn't do so well. These kind of models were made more so for schools and kiosks and the like, until the CDI format completely discontinued in 1998. In fact, this unit was manufactured in June of 1998, being warehouse stock for school number 69, nice, in the Cobb County area of Georgia. Although judging from all these unopened portfolio school program CDs that came with it, this never got to be used in a classroom and was just in storage for who knows how long. That's kind of sad, actually. I did try out a few of the discs to see what's on them, and, well, it's certainly class material for grades 1 through 5. Most of these come in two formats, audiobooks that play several tracks of lessons, Art is everywhere. It can be many things. And yet you're still gonna have people that argue that video games can't be art. Or YouTube videos, for that matter. 1. Draw you feeling special. 2. Use many types of lines. 3. Show your drawing to a friend. 4. If your friend says it's really good, always respond with, eh, it's not that good. Because second-guessing yourself is a requirement if you're going to be an artist. 
and the other being art galleries showing student artwork to inspire other students watching these, I guess? Now, I probably shouldn't be making fun of these kids' drawings, even if they are over 20 years old at this point, but... Hey, wait a minute, that's not Rolly. This is Rolly, because that's the name of my cat. I don't care if this was drawn way before he was born. The only other kind of art program city is this Internet Museum of Art, which doesn't have much going for it unless you want to look up some art history in a slow and methodical way and learn just how snobby 19th century art critics were. Okay, I don't mean to detract too much from the games. I will get to those soon. I just find this stuff fascinating. And to anyone watching, have you actually had one of these CDIs in your classroom? Or at least recall the program since they could be used on CD players and Windows 95, not just CDIs. Because I sure didn't. Feel free to comment if you did, that would be a neat coincidence. Going back to the system itself, it looks like it originally cost $425. Needless to say, I didn't pay nearly that much. And getting it over here was quite the journey for this thing, as it somehow ended up at a Texan flea market from Georgia that a friend informed it picked up for me, which he then dropped off at another friend's house in Ohio, which that friend then later dropped it off here in Ontario. This thing certainly has been around, but at least it now has a home, finally. Mostly for obscure gaming fire on YouTube, but it's better than sitting around in stories doing nothing, I'd say. While this device was intended for classrooms, it can play games thanks to the CDI's multimedia functionality. And since this is a late model system, it does support all CDI formats, including digital video and video CD that early CDI models needed a video card add-on for. Although it only has one controller input in the front and only outputs in composite, unless you need this module for RF. Some other models of CDI did have S-Video and PAL region ones even had SCART, but I'll just have to do with composite. You'd think with less video options that this wouldn't be as big as it is. This thing is a beast, one of, if not the biggest system I now own, even over the original Xbox and the launched PS3 I used for PS2 backwards compatibility, though not as heavy, especially the PS3. That won't stop me from using this to play the games I do have, ones that I want to showcase as my first CDI game experiences. Plus, these actually do fit in with the Halloween aesthetic. Well, two of them certainly do, the third one is a bit of a stretch. But they do provide enough to make this a Halloween episode, not just because, woo, CDI is scary. So enough stalling, let's get to them already. Starting things off, we have Mystic Midway Rest in Pieces in this tall case, and with a cover like this, how could I not do this as a Halloween game? What with the spoopy imagery and the guy looking like a fusion of Bob Ross and Colonel Sanders, who according to the back cover is the humorously insulting Dr. Dearth. He seems fun. We also have amazing features such as high scores, 10 game levels, and CD soundtrack! Also, there's no instruction booklet for this game. The one in the case is just a pamphlet for other CDI games and things. Oh man, Dark Castle for only $40! Coming attractions. Zombie dinos from Planet Zeltoid? I'll have to keep an eye out for that one. Rest in Pieces was released in 1992 and was published by American Interactive Media and made by Philips POV Entertainment Group who before working on CDI games, were Cinemaware. Upon starting up the game, we are greeted by Dr. Dearth in all of his FMV live-action glory. Within this... carny world, you're mine! <laughs> oh, mine! <laughs> Tonight, it's my distinct pleasure to offer you one of the finest shooting galleries there ever was. I call it... Rest in Pieces. Clever, huh? <laughs> so, we're trapped in some kind of ghoulish purgatory amusement park called the Mystic Midway ran by Dr. Dearth, and the current attraction in this game is the shooting gallery Rest in Pieces, where your objective is to hit as many spooky targets as you can in each stage and earn enough points to go on to the next. Simple enough, sure, yet actually playing this is not as easy as it looks. The gun used to shoot is clunky to aim with and its projectiles are pretty slow, meaning that the time you need to do actually hit targets will take a while to get used to. Now, I am using a CDI mouse that came with the system to play this, and thankfully it can be used for all three of my CDI games since I don't have a game controller at this moment. My only other option would be using the sister remote, and actually trying to play games with this thing is a nightmare. Halloween pun intended. In fact, the only thing I like about this remote is the eject and close tray button. While it is much more responsive than a remote, the mouse still isn't as responsive as I would like, especially when trying to quickly scroll from one side of the gallery to the other. And there isn't a way to adjust the mouse speed in the system options, on this model at least. 
nor are there any in-game options for it, so I'm stuck with this default slower mouse speed. Even Mario Paint that came out the same year had a mouse speed option. Plus, it's not all that comfortable with its awkward shape, so the CDI mouse isn't great, but I'll have to deal with it. Each stage has a different assortment of targets to shoot, all behaving a little different from each other. There's also obstacles that don't give points to block shots, which get quite annoying in later stages. But what really gets me is that the positions and speed of targets are completely random. Some will stick around long enough to shoot, while others go away almost immediately, probably just to fake you out. The most egregious were the head targets that turn away by going back down, and even if you hit their backsides, it doesn't count for points. It's a bit too much like an unfair carny game. Oftentimes you need to anticipate more than react, because the sluggish mouse along with the timing of shots certainly reduces my reaction times to precisely aim. Oh, and you do have an ammo count and a timer, so you can't waste too many shots or take your time. The game expects you to aim and shoot efficiently, so it probably won't be long until you not meet a point threshold. Whether you clear a stage or not, Dr. Dirth will pop up with some Halloween joke but quality humor. Do good and you get a half-hearted compliment. Oh boy, your score's really spooking me out! <laughs> Do poorly and you get mocked. You're playing like a relative to the abominable snowman! Because it's obvious, your eyesight is way off! <laughs> oh, and if you fail at any level, that's it. Game over. Put your name in the high score feature and play again from the start. Or exit the game if you had enough and want to see Dr. Dirth berate you some more. Close, but no cigar, Toad Brain! <laughs> you know, you... you just missed it. I will say this about Dr. Dirth. Despite his eye-rolling jokes and mockery towards the player, he is the best part of this game. His over-the-top acting really does sell this character. I'll take him over any other FV character that tells me I suck even though it's the game that actually sucks. Speaking of sucks, this game still kinda does even with Dr. Dirth's charm. I spent more time than I care to admit seeing if I can do all 10 levels, but kept not getting the later more demanding scores. It quickly became monotonous with my constant attempts, and after seeing all of the Dr. Dirth clips the game has to offer over and over, it really did feel like I was trapped in a purgatory carnival trying to beat an unbeatable game. But after enough persistence, I did beat the 10th level and... moved on to level 11. I knew playing CDI against would be a new low for me, but I didn't think it would be this low. So yeah, turns out there's more than 10 levels. Wait, what the hell is that? Hey! There's ammo pickups in these later stages too? What else is this game hiding from me? Well, unfortunately I didn't see anything else as I got a game over on the 14th stage. But upon exiting, Dr. Dirth was actually somewhat impressed with my performance. Hey! <laughs> Pretty good score for a sleazeball like you. Maybe somebody up in the front office will notice. <laughs> Hey, whoa, what, what? You don't think you were getting out of here that easy? Well, I'm... I'm sheen-faced. I, I really am over this little misunderstanding, you know? It just goes to show you can't trust a living soul. Especially when they're dead. <laughs> hey, but... For you. Yeah, yeah, I mean you, Mort Face. I'll do my best. Oh, really? We'll get back to you. You know what, at this point I'll take that as a moral victory and stop right here. Mystic Midway Rest in Pieces is a novel idea, and Dr. Dirth is a fun character, but it's barely above games like the original Space Invaders on the Atari 2600, and the novelty wears up pretty quickly. The imagery and FV quality is alright, though with the music, all you have is the same spooky jingle that loops constantly. CD soundtrack my ass, one jingle is not a soundtrack. Well. Technically, I suppose it is, but you know what I mean. And during the shooting, there's no music at all. But some of the sound bites targets make when you hit them are pretty amusing. Hey, buddy! Blow me down! However, the style does not make up for what little substance this game has. It's something you can just look at for a few minutes for the cheesy Dr. Dirth and Campy Spooks vibe. Actually, trying to play through this with its not very smooth controls and frustrating target shooting wasn't all that fun. I'd only recommend it if you are a CDI collector. Well, we're off to a good start. And I'm sure it'll keep going well with the next one, which is actually the other Mystic Midway game. Phantom Express. I guess you could say, THEY MADE A SEQUEL! Though some of you may actually know more about this game than Recipe Pieces thanks to a certain more popular reviewer covering it a few years ago. 
Except that was the MS-DOS version that this and Rest of Pieces got ported to afterwards. So clearly I'm not a ripoff since I'm doing the original CDI version. Though there aren't any major differences as far as I could tell, other than the DOS version still being a tall box while the CDI version is in a standard sized CD case instead of the tall ones used for Rest in Pieces. Either way, the cover is still gold with these clip art people riding a roller coaster into Dr. Durr's mouth. That's the only reason I need to play this, so let's go pop it in. Okay, I know that was really counterintuitive, but I wanted to make some good use out of this remote. Mystic Midway Phantom Express came in a year after Rest in Pieces and was made by the same developers, just published by Philips themselves this time. And booting up the game goes into a menu selection with a bunch of options, including selecting the game difficulty and what control you'll be using. It's almost like it's an actual video game now! Starting a new game will have you once again be greeted by Dr. Dearth giving you the gist of the game. How many times have you said, if I could only live my life over again, I'd... Well, here on the Phantom Express, we give it to you, one nightmare at a time. <laughs> Have a nice life. So basically, the Mystic Express is a roller coaster ride that represents stages of your supposed life, all the while shooting at targets that are bad memories to reach a score threshold in order to go on to the next. Only instead of a bare bones gallery shooter, it's a bare bones rail shooter. Halloween pun intended. And just like the last game, the shooting isn't very good. It stems from the same issues I have with the CDI mouse along with the sporadic nature of the targets. Selecting a control method in the controller options only adjusts their cursor reaction time accordingly, so even with the mouse being faster and more suitable, it's still a pain to try and shoot at everything quickly. Because targets zip all over the screen and disappear before you can line up your cursor, you end up rapidly shooting everywhere to hit anything you come across to mix results. However, even if you don't meet the score requirement, Dr. Dearth does give you another chance. Up to three, in fact, since the developers remembered most games have extra lives. When you do well enough, you go on to the next stage and see what Dr. Dearth is dressed up as. You know what's so lovely? You decided to return to your childhood. Oh, you didn't have to, but you did. Once again, Dr. Dearth is pretty much the only reason to play this game, and the different costume he wears for each stage of life add a whole new layer of cheese on top. But that still doesn't really warrant going through a subpar game. Now, thankfully, it was much easier to go through this game, on the Sweet Dream skill level at least, which is of course the easy difficulty. The seven stages are infancy, childhood, teenage years, getting married, 30-something, midlife crisis, and old age. They all play out the same, just with the nature of the targets and constant barrage of pessimistic remarks via audio flashbacks to match each stage. Apparently our life was so full of annoyances and embarrassing moments that despite the privileges of getting married, having a job, and living to an old age, that it was just so painfully average and we have to relive them all on this roller coaster ride. It's like we're playing as Doug Funny or a really downer version of the game of life. After the initial seven stages, there is one more bonus stage that combines all of the stages as one big finale. Beat that, and Dr. Dearth congratulates you, but taunts that you are still stuck in the park because you're still dead, I guess, and put your name on the high scoreboard. Normally, a sensible gamer would stop there, but since I beat the game on easy in about 20 minutes, I'd figure I'd try to get more out of this. The harder skill levels are naturally much more difficult, and trying to play on Bad Dream, the medium setting, resulted in game overs despite my best efforts. There is a practice option to play any stage of life, but the most intriguing is the two-player modes. You can either play cooperatively with a shared score, or competitively with separate scores. Now, not having someone else to conveniently play this with, or even having another controller won't stop me from doing these. You can have one player with a remote, just hope they don't hit you forever if you make someone use that. However, remember how my DVS system had only one controller output in the front? Well, that actually affects the two-player functionality with the remote, because the curses will end up like this, and only one player can move both of them at a time, meaning you need to have a controller plugged into the back of the CDI for player one, even if the second player is using a remote. That's old obscure gaming hardware for you. 
However, while this is a detriment for playing with another player, I actually found this to be beneficial doing it myself, as I can shoot with both curses and since they cover more ground, I can hit more targets reliably. Although I had to play like this to get the most out of it, it started to hurt after a while. I actually did this in order to beat the Bad Dream difficulty in co-op. You don't get a different ending scene from Dr. Dirth or anything else as far as I can tell, though. There are only two variations for most cutscenes with Dr. Dirth that play out regardless of the difficulty, so the replay value isn't really there either. I did attempt the Nightmare difficulty, but just couldn't get through it even with my co-op method. But since I don't imagine there's any special scene or anything for beating the game on Nightmare, unless I am wrong, I feel I got everything I could out of this. I still wasn't very impressed, though. I also wasn't impressed with the visuals in this game. Dr. Dirth and his background are still fine, but the empty voice during the roller coaster don't make the actual ride very exciting. And the clip art drawings of the targets are the only things that stand out. Sunwise, it isn't any better either. The only music is the same jingle from the first game, and no music plays at all in the menus or during gameplay. I guess they only had enough room for Dr. Dirth, his jingle, and all the lovely sound clips during the stages. But because you'll be constantly shooting, you'll quickly realize that it drowns out all the other sounds! While this game is an improvement from Rest in Pieces, if only because actual game sensibilities were included, it's also not very fun to play. Dr. Dirth is still great, but he just doesn't carry either of these games enough. I will give props to the actor, Randy Polk, for his performances. The only other thing he did was star as the gun shop owner in the TurboGrafx CD version of It Came From The Desert, which does make sense since that was a Cinemaware game. Also, shouts to all five of you or so that actually played this version. And since the Mystic Midway games, he has gone on to be a University of Houston professor and even has a Twitter that he mentioned about his roles a couple of times. Though I don't ask that you swamp his Twitter on my behalf, please. It's not the most active account and I want to be courteous in that regard. As for the developers, well, after the Thunder in Paradise game, yes, really, they became mass media games and are still around. Though what's funny is that on the PlayStation Home for the PS3, they did make a series of carnival games called The Midway. That has to be a callback. And their most recent work is the Switch, PS4, and Xbox One version of Carnival Games. I guess they couldn't escape from doing carny games even after all these years. And really, I do think the idea of the Mystic Midway with a character like Dr. Dirth is good. It's just that it was held back by the limitations on the CDI. Nowadays, this could maybe work better as a minigame compilation with all sorts of spooky attractions, earning tickets to win prizes or maybe even your freedom. Who knows? But in the meantime, we can reminisce on the delightfully corny Dr. Dirth and forget everything else, really. Alright, we only have one more game to cover, so hopefully third time's the charm? Or will it be the third strike and the CDI is out? Let's find out with Ephesur, Hangman from the 25th Century. It's gonna be the latter, isn't it? Ephesur was released in 1994 and developed by Capital Disc Interactive. While the Mystic Midway games did get poured to DOS, Ephesur is a CDI exclusive. So, this isn't really a Halloween game, but it does have a live-action person in an alien costume that looks like Groot with Star Wars Stormtrooper armor, so... that kind of counts, right? Anyway, this guy is the titular Ephesur, an intergalactic... enforcer of sorts to upkeep the power of the English language, despite, you know, being an alien. I am actually speaking Rigelian. By an astonishing coincidence, both of our languages are exactly the same. As a human that somehow becomes part of this, you are tasked with deciphering words that will sense convicted aliens of their language wrongdoings on the present planet of Erdrick. In other words, just play Hangman. From, From the, the 25th, 25th century. century! In case you couldn't tell, this is more of an educational game. Not just with words and spelling, but also grammar, as each alien criminal you sentence represents grammar mistakes such as wrong tenses, double negatives, or reckless hyphenation. You can learn about each criminal before starting the round to see how they correlate to their grammatical errors and hear some backstory on their criminal activities. They also steal oxygen from grandmothers, and they knock down octopods who are learning to walk. It is pretty silly even for educational game standards, but a creative way to combine criminals with grammar mistakes. It's almost like we get to play as some kind of English major drudge dread. Although there is one that arguably isn't really bad grammar, just bad wordplay jokes. The punster. You've caught me dangling at the end of my rope. I'm just hanging on by a thread. Oh dear. I don't mean to twine, but of course I'm innocent. Just don't string me along, huh? Because I can't take any more bad news hanging around the gallows like this. Yeah, this one deserves to die the most. <laughs> I just realized that may seem a bit critical since I have made a couple of puns in this video, but I can get away with those because they were for Halloween. 
And don't bother pointing out any other grammar mistakes, I never said it was perfect. However, there are a lot of limitations that hold this premise back. I mean, this is still more or less just Hangman after all. You can pick the level of word difficulty and how long the letter guess timer will be, but other than that, you guess letters, have a limited number of wrong guesses, can click on these bomb symbols to use up guesses as a hint for a letter, and when you get it right, the criminal gets sentenced. Then you can learn the definition of the word and move on to another word in criminal. Although, there isn't really any correlation between the criminal and the randomly generated words, so any significance is merely coincidental. <laughs> Actually, wait, isn't the point of Hangman being to solve the word before the Hangman is drawn and effectively sentenced? When playing as the word guesser, anyway. And yet, here we are sentencing futuristic aliens when we solve words. Does that mean we actually save them if we make too many mistakes instead? I suppose it is a different take on Hangman, but still pretty odd when you think about it. Then again, I wouldn't call myself a Hangman expert as I actually did struggle to solve some words at first. I haven't played any form of Hangman in years, and some of the words are pretty absurd. Like, what the hell is a dimer? Oh, right, I can actually look that up here. Oh, okay. Some science buffs probably already knew that, but I am actually learning some things from this game. You do thankfully keep going at the expense of a turn, and even if you get a game over after losing all your turns, you can just play again, which is essentially just going to the next word anyway. Also, the officer does pop up to give you some encouragement if you lose really badly at a word. Experience shall soon be yours, and you shall defeat those that today mock you. Bide your time. Wisdom is on your side. While I do miss Dr. Durth already, I appreciate having an actual considerate FMV character. Those are extremely rare. He also shows up if you do really well at a guest to compliment you. You display an excellent grasp of the language. Despite the officer's assurance, the biggest drawback this game has is the fact that there are only seven criminals that get randomly selected, which means it takes no time for repeated criminals to show up, and you'll have seen all of their backstories and non-violent sentence animations before you know it. Also, the game is never-ending, with no high scoreboards or anything, so there isn't much of a reason to keep going once you've seen everything. Sure, the game boasts having 40,000 words, but there's no desire to see what words you get when the theme of the game to make it stand out becomes monotonous. Which means, you guessed it, the novelty wears off quickly! And you're just left with a CDI version of Hangman, which is about as optimized as you would expect. Slow transitions with load times that take a few seconds make it a chore to get through everything. It would actually be faster to Google search the word nowadays instead of selecting the definition in the game. And even with this being the game that would make the most sense to use a mouse, it still doesn't feel all that great to use and the cursor disappears over anything clickable, which is extra annoying. There is a two-player mode, but it's not very involved. You just take turns until one of you outlasts the other. Couldn't they have one person be the guesser while the other picks a word, when the guesser looks away or something? Like an actual two-player game of Hangman? That might be asking too much for a CDI game, though. That also applies to the presentation. I mean, the officer isn't a terrible costume, and the CG renders of the criminals are fine for the time as well. It's just that you can really tell what kind of budgets they had for games like this. The prison plan and sci-fi sound effects does give a decent desolate atmosphere, but the droning ambience does not help with the monotony. And this is the third game in a row that has little to no music. I'm not demanding much here, it's just that this is a CD system and there's only been one music track in the entirety of the three games I own for it. I've had to use my own music selection over these games for this video. I'd say Metro Prime 2 music works well for Efficer. And say what you will about the Sega CD, but at least a good chunk of the games had kick-ass soundtracks. In fact, I can take a Sega CD game and play its music off of the CDI, just because I can. There, I finally got my 90s CD game music fix. I don't want to give lip to those that have put honest work into a game, but I feel that I should be prompt to give my criticisms in this last segment of the review. As predictable as this will sound, Ephesor is once again an inglorious use of style prioritizing over the lacking supplement of game offerings. Sure, it may not be as painstaking as trying to get past level 10 and rest in pieces, nor did it risk my risk of arthropathy like in Phantom Express, but forgive the use of this abbreviated phrase, I got bored rather quickly. The mechanics of a simple hangman game do not warrant the exhortation of an alien version with grammar criminals. I can't be complacent with only having a far interpretation and undesigned a game that can be played on pencil and paper. I had hoped that as the latest game, it would show how much CDI games have grown, yet all it did was confirm how inept the system can be and how it affected the microbiosis of the CDI format. I hate to be a gatecrasher on the system, but after being desirous of what these games had to offer, I only found something that a many crowded gamers would reject, the falsity of features that weren't even true, to mortify at the thought of playing these slowly running games anymore. Okay, maybe that's a bit much. In the end, I just typified towards it all. 
Huh. I may have learned more than I thought I did in Ephesus. Well, whatever. Point is, that's all of my first CDI games, and well, they certainly met my expectations. But don't think I'll stop there. I'll be on the lookout for other CDI games I could potentially do in the future, whether it be born from CJ, or if I come across some for decent prices, or through, uh, other means. <clears throat> so feel free to make any suggestions if you do know CDI games. Besides the obvious ones. Until then, I do have one more thing I can try out, even if it isn't a game. Treasures of the Smithsonian. While I do that, I'll see you all in the next video. In 1927, the Spirit of St. Louis and its young pilot, Charles Lindbergh, slogged their way across the Atlantic and into the hearts of millions. This originally cost $425. Europe